Hi everybody, Jeff Colburn here. Today we're going to be talking about lightning photography. This is part one of three parts of the uh, videos that we're going to be doing. Now, one thing you want to be aware of when you're out photographing lightning is it is very dangerous. It can get you killed or seriously injured. So think about that before you actually decide to go out and shoot. Now, if you go out there, the only two ways to really be safe is to be in a secure building, that is doors and windows closed, roof, no open car ports or anything like that, or in your car. Contrary to popular belief, it's not the rubber tires that protect you in your car. Cars are double hulled. So the lightning passes around the outer hull, doesn't make it to the inner hull. Unless there's something that connects the outer hull to the inner part of the car, such as window cranks, door handles, that kind of thing. So don't touch those if you're in a car in a lightning storm. Be sure the windows are up and don't be in a convertible because the canvas won't stop the lightning. So with that in mind, go out and shoot, be safe. I don't think it makes much difference, but in my mind, what I try and do if the storm is over here is I try and be outside shooting towards the storm. But you may have heard of the phrase, a bolt from the blue. What can happen is there can be a lightning storm over the horizon, you can't even see the clouds, and it can send a lightning bolt over the horizon and hit you. So when it comes to lightning, there's just no guarantees. I've almost been hit three times. I've met four other people who have been hit. So just be aware of that. So when I go out, I bring my camera bag, of course. I also bring a raincoat. I'm generally not sitting or standing in the rain when I take these pictures, but I bring a raincoat just in case. I also bring a rain hat, just a baseball hat, and it's designed to keep the water off of my glasses, which works sometimes for that. I also bring a sturdy tripod because you're probably going to be shooting in wind uh, more often than not. And I've been out in windy conditions so bad I'd actually hold the tripod so it wouldn't fall over and hold the camera because it was vibrating enough even on the tripod and so on. So I bring all of that stuff with me as well as an umbrella, not for me, but to keep water off of the end of the lens. And you have to practice to see how far down you can put the umbrella in front of the lens without getting it into the picture frame. So those are the basics that I have. Then I grab some cloths. I have a new washcloth, uh, microfiber cloths, and you can bring all of those with you to get whatever water does get on the end of the lens off. I also bring washcloth to wipe the mud off of the feet of the tripod because I'm usually shooting in mud when I do this kind of stuff. And you just grab my lightning bag and it's got that plus a bunch of other gear in it. I've got, and I keep everything in plastic sleeves to um, keep it dry in case it's out in the rain. Instructions, basic instructions on shooting lightning since I only shoot lightning one or two months out of the year. And it tells me daytime and nighttime, uh, camera adjustments, you know, f-stops, shutter speed, that kind of thing. So I can just real quickly glance at this before I go out shooting and know what I'm doing. I also went to the Chamber of Commerce and got a map of the area and went out in daylight, found all the places I could safely pull off, wide sections on the shoulder of the road. Uh, there's a cemetery that I use and it's nice, flat. I've also shot comets out there. Um, this wherever you can find places to safely pull off. And you need to check this again every year to make sure that those spots are still viable. I had one road that I used to use a lot and they put up guardrails. There was another road I used a lot and they decided to dig a deep ditch on the side of the road, which would have definitely got my car stuck there halfway in the lane. So you don't want to do that. You want to check every year, make sure things haven't changed. And what I do is I go in here and you can see the dots. That's where I can park. And the arcs, that tells me where I can see. So if I park in this spot, I can see this area. If I park over here, I can see that area. If I park over here, I can see this area. So when I'm looking at a storm, and there's a spot that I go to when I leave the house to shoot lightning, big flat area. See 360 degrees. I can see where the storms are, where they're moving, where I need to position myself. And that way I can decide which of these spots I need to go to in order to get the angle that I want to get the lightning storm and try and stay out on the edge of the storm so I don't hopefully get hit. 
So those are some basic things you want to take with you. Now, what we're going to talk about in the next video is we're going to uh, talk about some of the basic equipment that I bring. And then in the third video, we're going to talk about the lightning sensor that I use to take my photographs. So happy shooting and stay safe out there.